Today we're going to be looking at the guitar style of Pete Townsend, which fits in really well with a lot of the things we've talked about in prior lessons, most notably taking those three principal open position chord shapes, moving them up and down the neck to vary your playing, and also incorporating parts of them into your solos. Pete is pretty much the master of both of these things, and he showed it really, really well in the Tommy era tunes like Sparks, Pinball Wizard, and the song we're going to look at today, which is See Me, Feel Me. We're going to be looking at the Woodstock version, which is a seminal performance by The Who, by any band in the history of rock. See Me, Feel Me starts out with some nice mellow chord progressions uh, up and down the neck, and then it builds into some raucous, chunking power chord riffs that are just really fun to crank up. And then there's some cool solos as well. So I'm going to show you all of that, again, from the Woodstock version. Because Tommy was designed as an opera, there are a lot of motifs, right? Repeating figures, patterns that transition song to song, as well as just reappear in the middle of different songs. And so the transition that goes into See Me, Feel Me is the same chord progression that you'll see in Sparks, which is just simply an open D. two frets to play an E chord. So we're just playing those top three strings. You can fret the fourth string when you play the D, obviously, because it's a D. <laughs> the fourth string is a D, open. But when you move it up to play the E, you're just playing those top three strings. And he plays that twice. And it's just sort of a little transition. The first song of the, the first chord of the actual See Me, Feel Me song progression is up here at the 6th fret and in terms of movable chord shapes you can see that that's our D minor from the first position chord shape brought up to the 6th fret right our root note is on the second string there with your pinky that's a G so this is a G minor You'll see it tabbed as an E flat major 7, and the reason for that you'll see in a moment because when, when Pete plays the progression the second time around, he adds the E flat note to, this, to the three notes of a G minor triad. That's what we're playing here is just the G minor triad with the B flat note uh, doubled. If you're not into theory, just ignore all this and play the chord, okay? Sixth fret. After that, G minor slash E flat major 7, we went to a, an F chord, movable D shape, come up to the 5th fret, it's an F, we're only playing the top 3 strings, we're adding the suspended 4th on the 6th fret at the 1st string, again classic Pete Townsend from this Tommy era, and then we're resolving on the G major, which is the key of the song, all right? He really plays it as a G5. In other words, he's just playing the root in the fifth. You're really kind of just muting that B string, excuse me, that B note on the fifth string, and you're not playing the open B second string, you're playing it as a D. So you've got G, D, G, D, mute, G. So it's a G5 chord is the resolution. Okay, so that's the first time around. Now here's where it gets interesting for me. This is one of the most beautiful chords I've ever heard. This is that, that E flat major seventh. The second time around in the progression, he plays it here. That's just a beautiful chord. So we've got the same three notes of the G minor barred. We have up here, there's our G minor, but he's adding the E flat, first fret, fourth string. So, now the second time around we're playing the F in the first position. 
And so to make it a suspended fourth, you're dropping your pinky onto the third string, third fret. Resolving to the G just like the first time. Okay, this goes around a couple of times as it builds. So, you know, first time playing it up here, 6th and 5th fret, second time playing it down in 1st position. As it builds, Pete gets more robust with his strumming, louder, he's getting some dirt out of it with his pick attack. time around, instead of resolving to the G, it resolves to an E5. So if we're up here going Chunking on that E5, he kind of does a little riff up to the B, which is kind of like... So second, fourth, open second, landing on a B power chord. Now I usually play this movable A power chord, bar chord, with my pinky than with the ring finger like this. But since Pete's going to be doing a suspended chord here, you have to have your pinky free. So after you walk up to that B chord, that's just classic Tommy era Pete Townsend. on the album. If you have a hard time playing it like that, it is kind of challenging. Just take that movable A shape little bar and just play it like this. You've got a B suspended four of the A shape like this. We've got a B suspended four of the E F shape. As you'll see in a minute, to end the sol both solos, or all three actually, kind of does three little solos in the Woodstock version. So again, if you have trouble with the, play it like this, or like this. Again, that's what we're working on. We're working on the movable chord, so it makes sense to play around with it like that. Right, so after that B suspended four chord, we're going to go into the second sort of signature chord progression of the song, which is a chunky power chord ascending riff from an A to a B to a C, all with the movable A shape. Okay, I've got some a little bit of distortion kicked in now. <laughs> is as follows. A, B, C. Sometimes he hits the B going back down. That was A, B, E. And the third time, A, B, C. And then G, D, B suspended for
the first one, Pete starts with just a, a real raunchy single note uh, ascending motif following the chord progression. So A, B, C. <laughs> It's all about the flourish, right? It's all about the attitude with Pete. He's doing the windmills. A, B, A, B, C. Single notes. Second time he plays them is doubles. Double stops. So A5, B5, E5. time around uh, the chord progression on the solo is where it gets interesting and here's where he's incorporating parts of those movable chord shapes into his solo. What he's going to be doing is taking the fourth and second strings and playing parts of that movable A shape up and down the neck just following that chord progression. So the chord progression is A, B, C, G, D, B suspended four. So he's going to play parts of that chord and it's going to look like this. That was obviously not full speed or the same timing, but again, a chord, B chord, C chord, and then he starts really kind of riffing on that out. Then all the way up to the 12th fret G chord, 7th fret D chord, and then ending on the B suspended 4. the relative minor to G major, which means that you can wail away in the uh, E minor pentatonic scale over this chord progression, which is exactly what Pete does in the second solo on the Woodstock version. He goes up to the E minor pentatonic box, first position E minor pentatonic box at the 12th fret, which again is exactly the same as the scale in your first position, right? It's just an octave higher. And he just does this standard wailing Bending that D note at the 15th fret up so it's approaching the E that you're playing at the 12th fret uh, first string. This is just an incredibly common lick of, in all of rock and roll. He does that five times or so and then he just kind of just walks down the E minor pentatonic scale there at the 12th fret. And by that point, you're coming to the third uh, progression in the which we know by now goes G, D, B suspended 4. So he does this really cool lick where he's just kind of going the A, B, C the way he did before. But then he resolves it with this really nice single note uh, ascending run. And by the time he gets to that B note at the ninth fret fourth string, Sounds like his amp's about to explode, especially the third time around. So, he's following the chord progression. You know, it's G. We're going G, D, B, suspended four. So he starts with a G. Over the G he goes G, B, C. And then over the D, he starts on the D and does the same riff. 
G F sharp, excuse me, D F sharp G. And by the time he hits that B note up there, the ninth fret, then he's in position to do his B suspended four and really wail on that. The song ends on a classic Tommy motif, which is... Obviously, Pete plays it a lot more smoothly than that, but that's the idea. E, A, A, A. And again, that's a motif repeated throughout Tommy. So, that's a little bit about Pete Townsend's guitar style, focusing on see me feel. Play around with those movable chord shapes, take a shot at Pinball Wizard, take a shot at Sparks. You'll see that so much of Pete's style is formed by moving those D, A, and E shapes up and down the neck and adding suspended force, etc. Hope you enjoyed that and thanks for joining me. I will see you next time.